Before we begin understanding thunderstorms, let's take a quick look at some severe weather climatology on both a large and small scale. The Great Plains of the United States is unique in that it oftentimes serves as a breeding ground for strong low pressure systems just east of the Rocky Mountains. As these lows develop, they pull warm, moist air north from the Gulf of Mexico and also carry warm but dry westerly winds eastward from the higher elevations. Many times, the division between these moist and dry air masses will take the form of what is called a dry line, and these dry lines can serve as an ignition mechanism for severe thunderstorm development, most commonly in the springtime. Here is a map comparing the average number of tornadoes each year throughout the nation. From 1981 to 2010, Texas has averaged 150 tornadoes each year. This map is a little more telling about which areas of states tend to have the most number of tornadoes. Here we're looking at the total number of tornadoes reported on a county-by-county -county basis going back to 1952. The Storm Prediction Center compiled this interesting graphic showing the average number of tornado watches per year on a county-by-county -county basis. Since 1993, note that areas in Alabama and Mississippi have stood a greater likelihood of being impacted by a tornado than the traditional tornado alley located farther to the west. Much of this is due to their close proximity to moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, but also the fact that Alabama and Mississippi have higher population densities, which ultimately reduce the chance of fewer tornadoes going unreported as compared to areas in the Great Plains. But looking at the average number of severe thunderstorm watches issued each year, you can clearly see a maximum in the southern and central Great Plains. In the National Weather Service Lubbock forecast area, we average around 11.5 days each year with severe thunderstorm watches. Here is a closer look at the 24 county forecast area that the National Weather Service in Lubbock is responsible for. Due to the Caprock Escarpment, the terrain varies from nearly 4,400 feet above sea level in Parmer County to just 1,100 feet in parts of Stonewall County. In certain situations, this contrast in elevation can actually promote thunderstorm development, especially if moist easterly winds are in place. These winds are forced upward in elevation as they travel west up the Caprock, and sometimes this rising air makes storm development that much easier. From 1950 through 2012, here are the total number of tornadoes confirmed in each of our 24 counties. An important disclaimer about this is that the population density is much lower in areas off the Caprock versus points farther to the west. So even if more tornadoes may indeed occur out in the rolling plains, there are simply fewer people out there to report seeing them and there's also much less in the way of damage indicators such as buildings, trees, and power lines. Here is a more detailed look showing the actual distribution of all the tornadoes going back to 1950. As you can see, there is a localized maximum of 90 or more tornadoes that extends from Plainview West to near Olton, with a secondary maximum that spreads south into far eastern Hockley County and much of western Lubbock County. Using 30 years of data, the months of April, May, and June are clearly our most active months for tornadoes, with the peak occurring in May when on average we can expect six tornadoes. January is the only month in which we have not had a tornado occur in our forecast area. And lastly, it is important to know that the number of tornadoes each year does vary. For the past three years, the National Weather Service Lubbock forecast area has seen relatively few tornadoes, but on average we can expect 17 tornadoes each year, with some years experiencing numbers well above this average. Much of this year-to-year -year variability depends on both large and small-scale weather factors, particularly drought conditions, which as a whole act to suppress the number of thunderstorm days and ultimately tornadoes, as we saw quite vividly during the historic drought of 2011.